Company of Heroes board game. This is a board game based on a video game apparently, video game about which I knew absolutely nothing. I didn't I didn't even know it existed until I learned that from the rule book of this one. But I played this one, so I can tell you about Company of Heroes the board game, but I will not be able to compare it with the digital version which I have not played. So Company of Heroes board game, it is set in World War II, we have four factions, the German, the English, the Americans and the Russians, and you can create different confrontations between them. Uh, it's scenario based and also comes with a lot of terrain tile and a lot of different components and you can easily create your own scenarios. It is mainly a two-player game, but apparently there is also a true soul expansion and a cooperative expansion, but I have not uh, tried those. What I did was to play the game multiplayer solo, in which I controlled both factions during each confrontation at the best of my possibilities, and the game still works that way, in case you are wondering. So, Company of Heroes board game. It is played on these large maps, large maps with definitely large hexes. This is my hand for scale. So it's gonna take up quite a bit of space, but it is also gonna look pretty epic on the table. This is a single map, they are also double-sided, so again that tells you a lot of a lot of options when you see that there are several other maps also double-sided. You can mix and match and combine. And again, many scenarios take two of these, so you can imagine uh, between that and other components, it is gonna be pretty big. But again. It has a pretty strong table, table presence for sure. Each faction has a set of three cards, such as these ones. One starts face up, these are the two start face down, and when they are face down, the back can be used as reference. As the game progresses, you will spend resources, the amount indicated there, to flip them face up and the, that will allow you to recruit more options. So you start with a small number of weaker units and then you unlock more options and then you can bring in uh, bigger units and the bigger guns, quite, quite literally, as you can see. These cards tell you what the units do. So for example, if I have a unit of grenadiers, I know that they will have four miniatures on the tray representing four health points range of two this icon indicates the kind of attack that they perform the cost if i buy it possible bonuses and other upgrades that i can buy in both cases here you have the cost that it cost me to acquire that upgrade it may be experience it may be uh, tokens representing bullets, and this is the kind of advantage that I gain. So there is a little bit of iconology that you need to become familiar with, but if you play modern hobby games, you're familiar with that. It's nothing too daunting. There are games that force you to learn a lot more iconies than this one. So this is the quote unquote general introduction. As for the units themselves, uh, infantry is represented by, by plastic soldiers that go on these trays. Oh no, I just killed a German. Friendly fire. It was an accident. So uh, these trays, uh, you will place a toy soldier on each of them. To represent health points and then if you place one of these other items here it indicates a specialized unit for example I just turned this unit into a machine gun unit this is a Russian unit but then we may also have a mortar Russian unit and this gives you the general general idea as for the vehicles I'll just show you I'll just show you some they're really neat Probably some of you will want to paint these miniatures. I find them pretty nice, but you know me, if you watch my videos, I do not paint miniatures. And these ones just look nice enough without any need for paint, in my humble opinion. I'll show you the other two trays also, again, because I know that for some of you, miniatures are really, really important. Here we go. Feast your eyes upon the beauty of these trays full of plastic toys. 
because that's what they are and I'm saying that not as a negative at all. So, uh, just to keep it simple, we're gonna have some infantry though perform a couple of things for us just to give us a sense of how the game works. Now, uh, the game you will want to start from the basic rules uh, and then you're gonna add the advanced rules. There's just one rule from the advanced rules that I recommend you use from the very first game. Uh, it doesn't really add much but it really elevates the experience of a gameplay which is light cover. We'll see what that means. Other than that I'm gonna explain uh, what, what you're gonna see in this video is the basic rules and you can add the other ones later. Now each turn you're going to start with an initiative phase in which you decide, in which you determine who decides who goes first. Usually it is the player who is behind in victory points. So very simple rubber banding mechanism there. If you're a little behind, then you get to decide who goes first in a turn, which can be very important. Then each turn has a maneuver phase and the maneuver phase has three rounds per player and each each maneuver round you will receive three command points so those are the ones for the Soviets and these are the ones for the Germans for example this is the phase where you move your units and that's all you do maneuver phase you just move it's not like I move and shoot and then you move and shoot and so on and so forth during each of the three sections of the maneuver phase, you receive three command points and you can spend them to move your units. Each unit that moves receives a cube and moves by one space per cube. As simple as that. Now I can spend my three cubes all on the same unit to move it three times, like so. Units also do move usually only three hexes or three movement points per uh, turn overall. So basically if I did that, that'd be fine, but then I cannot move that unit until the maneuver phase of the next turn. Or I could have done, so now is the time for the Germans to go and they wanna be a little more nuanced, so they spend a command point to maneuver on this unit and then two command points on this other unit. What I just did does may not make a lot of sense tactically, but it shows you how movement works. And then maybe the Soviets want to move this person here by one, and this one by one, and they decide not to use that one. Back to the Germans, this unit can still move by one, and so it decides to do so. Change my mind, I'll go back and these also move by one. So as you can see, it's a simple idea, but it really allows you um, to move units in a more fluid way than, well, I move a unit and the unit is done. You can do that, a unit dashes to the battlefield and then it's done, or you can move units more gradually across the battlefield, which I find a much more elegant way of resolving simultaneous movement and reaction movement that, than what I've seen in a lot of other war games. So, moving, 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 we will be moving until all command cubes have been assigned and so those units have moved, good for them. Now it's time to do some fighting and fighting Brace yourself, if you're an old school war gamer and you're standing, you, you may want to sit down for this one. Because combat is mostly deterministic. I know, I said it. Units that have enemy units within range, remember, two, four, two, four, two, etc, etc, etc. They get to attack. Also remember, the, the symbol here indicates the kind of damage that they produce. So you take these cubes and you simply assign the damage to the enemy to the enemy unit so for example these this unit produces an infantry damage any places there because it has an enemy within range and line of sight and this uh, the unit also produces infantry damage so it takes one of these and places it there um, and this unit does the same there and this unit does the same there. Oh, they, they have, that's a mortar unit. Uh -huh. So they produce this other kind of damage. 
and they have to oh they're also oh, they're machine guns so they also produce a pin token uh, where are those I can't find them now but they also produce damage so that's important also so you will simply assign these things and suppose in different circumstances maybe you decide did you want to pour it all on an enemy now after all damage dice have been placed you check to see if they hit or not and just so I tell you mostly deterministic they do usually hit the type of heart in which the health point is written indicates the defense the type of defenses that the unit has you cross-reference that with the type of of the da damage that has been assigned to it so for example green infantry receiving infantry damage that line there means that the unit has no intrinsic defenses if there is a shield it means that the unit actually gets to roll the dice that have been assigned to it as defense dice uh, this means uh, you cannot be hurt by that uh, this is a reminder of what happens if you're using the advanced rules so don't worry about that for now so in this case for example this unit is in the open receiving infantry damage no intrinsic advantage has received two infantry dies and then it loses two just like that suppose however that a unit has um, has a shield so a tank is firing on infantry tank is firing infantry or tank fire on infantry not particularly effective then if, when you have a shield from the defense matrix all dice that have been assigned to you as damage you get to roll them as saves and if you roll a, a red result that confirms that that confirms that that is a hit meaning you failed your defense roll and you do take a hit if you roll any other result uh, such as this one that's not a red that is a red any other result that the defense roll is successful and so you don't take that damage and so for example if I roll those two against an infantry unit that is a successful safe and that is a red one so that actually turns out to be a hit if that was the unit that received it so again mainly deterministic with the exception of what the def defensive matrix says in which ca case you roll the dice to confirm whether that causes a damage or not but you have to get that you have to accept this the most in most cases when you assign a die it's an automatic hit it's mostly deterministic defenses in the basic game as described uh, in the basic rules the only terrain that offers defenses is and i didn't even know that you can see it very well is green it's green edges that defines that define buildings in which case you do get if you're infantry in a building you get two defense dice and that's why I immediately recommended you use the at least one rule from the advanced rules which is to also take into account light cover which is these lines here that will provide the infantry with one defense roll because other than that is you're in the without that rule without that light cover everybody's in the open Infantry dies very easily, very quickly, very deterministically, unless they are in a building, in which case it's really hard to uh, to kill them. It's much more interesting if you have a battlefield that also has some form of cover. Not as extreme, extremely good, or extremely lacking as you have in the basic game. So, terrain may also give you some saves but you got to accept the fact that combat is mainly deterministic most of the dice that are assigned to units will result in automatic removal of little puppets here or damage that you inflict on damage that is inflicted on your units then we get after we have resolved that mainly deterministic combat i don't know if i mentioned that but that is really important then we get to the supply phase which has really strong that video game element of purchasing or purchasing uh, upgrades there are symbols on the map when you occupy those uh, spaces you get to place a flag there to indicate 
that you acquired that advantage. And that will impact this board here. Aha, uh -huh, plot twist, I didn't show it to you. Yeah, did I? This board here represents the resources that you have to purchase your upgrades. It's divided into two things, incomes and stockpiles. Stockpiles is what you actually have to spend. Incomes is what you get each term during the uh, supply phase. And that is impacted by the hexes on the board that you control. So for example, by taking control of that, I immediately improve my income in bullets and if I occupy the space here then I get uh, it doesn't matter which side is which then I get an increase in that uh, in that resource here so uh, during the supply phase I update my incomes based on what I control on the board then I produce those, that amount uh, that is added to my actual stockpiles. And then I get to spend them. And that's when I can say, spend them to acquire these capabilities here. In which case, if I get, say, that kind of attack, then I simply take a die and I place it in the tray of the unit that just got upgraded that way. Uh, experience, you collect experience, a point of experience, and you can place cubes representing experience. You can place them here. You get one when you damage a unit, the first time, an enemy unit, the first time each turn. Then you get more when you actually destroy enemy units. And again, you can purchase them for that kind of stuff. There's a slot here where you can place a commander card. Again, that's an advanced idea, but adds a lot uh, of value there. Commander cards also will give you different abilities as it is a sort of pay for use kind of thing. But again, with so many commands that you can purchase from game to game, a lot of replay value there. So, and this really, again, elevates the game by giving you so many more options, so many more ways of going around the uh, mostly deterministic combat. Because combat is deterministic, but to get to that point, you collected those dice, you collected different abilities, you're now using those abilities. So it does add a lot of new ones there. This is in essence the basic idea. Different scenarios will have different victory conditions, but usually victory points it what is what gets you where you want to be. But summarizing. Each turn you'll decide who goes first, then the players will move three movement rounds with three command points per movement rounds. Then you assign the dice that determine damage. Then you resolve combat. Finally, again, uh, collect income, spend supplies, and you repeat until one of the players has met the victory conditions of the scenario. I was pretty impressed by by Company of Heroes. Um, I think maybe even if I hadn't read this based on a video game, maybe it could have felt like, hey, this, does this come from a video game? Because there is that element of buying, perch, of buying upgrades, buying extra stuff, unlocking things as you go uh, within a scenario, not just from a scenario to another. It had that idea of like, I'm collecting things and I go to the bench and I'm building my new weapons or whatever it is that you do in video games that, that applies here. And you know, some old school people will be grumpy about it, but then the grown yards are always grumpy. And, and either, you know, you, War Game evolves or War Game uh, dies with the old generation. It's just as simple as that. I see Company of Heroes as a perfect compromise with, between War Gaming as as a style of gaming that represents conflict and just the taste of, of newer generations. This is a game that maybe you can play with people that are under 50 and there are not, just not many war games out there that that, that is true, uh, that that applies to. And I think this is a game, again, even if you have younger players that have never known the video game, uh, I think they can be attracted by the components. Uh, yes, they are flashy and glitzy, but they're also nice and solid. Uh, for those of you that like to paint miniatures, there's going to be a lot of fun to be had here with those vehicles that at least that look pretty good to me. Again, not an expert in miniatures, but they look good. And I, 
And for me also, they look good enough on the battlefield without me having to paint them, because I don't like to paint miniatures. So it is a game that you can play with a more casual audience, not just with, you know, 70-year-old grognards that, uh, that they can't think of wargaming without a complicated CRT. And those same people, by the way, that would complain about oh, games that are not realistic enough, or why would I have to upgrade? If I collect that thing, why would I have that bonus somewhere else? Of course, they look at the battlefield looking for that one strength point that gives you a shift in a column. That is not exactly the way historical commanders approach the task of, 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 the, of the art of warfare either. So, it is a game that uh, may feel gamey. But as a game with the military topic, to me, it really works. I like the, the fluid handling of, of movement. I think it's a lot more elegant than a lot of other games in which I've seen, uh, you know, designers try to do that, to give you instead of this unit goes all the way, then the other unit goes all the way, then the other unit goes all the way. The simultaneous fluid movement here, which you can choose to go the way, but you don't have to. You can choose to move some units not as much. Um, to see what the opponent does. So you have a nice back and forth during the movement phase also. Uh, combat again, I like it more than I thought I would when I read it on the rule book. Because in essence, especially if you take like cover into account, you then you have a nice balance between a mainly deterministic system and yet that unpredictability and yet that element uh, that, that just adds a little bit of spice to the situation. But in truth, buying those dice in the previous turns to get those extra things, maneuvering and placing units in position where you can use those deterministic dice, all that is still non-trivial and, uh, and it still gives a sense of uncertainty, although at the core it is a deterministic system. Uh, maybe you neglect it, you didn't realize that the opponent could have maneuvered in that spot, could have used that synergy, could have used that extra die. Oh my gosh, that is a machine gun, so they can use the pin ability, da 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 So there's still, there's still many factors at play that while deterministic, uh, you may not consider them all, and so they may still create some unpredictable situations. Which is, by the way, the only caveat I'm gonna have here. It is a game that may be prone, didn't happen to me, uh, to analysis paralysis. Didn't happen to me because I was the only player. I was playing solitaire, best of my possibilities of all, uh, controlling both sides, best of my possibilities. And I was still surprised precisely because I go, oh gosh, I didn't realize that the Soviets could do that. Okay. That's fun, because now there are things that uh, that I neglected, that create uncertainty, that create uh, unexpected situations. But if you're playing with a player that really wants to maximize their chances of success, uh, they will have the right to just take their sweet time to consider every possible option. Then I think you may have a problem there that may bog down the game. Then you can just house rule a timer so you have that real uh, time element which I think would make the game really interesting and exciting also. But again, I think with some players the semi-deterministic or mainly deterministic nature of combat and movement ultimately um, may cause some analysis paralysis. Other than that, what you have here is a really fun package because we have really high quality components. Production is really impressive. Uh, rules do a really good job of teaching you the game, I believe. And then you have such a big sandbox. It already comes with, with a bunch of scenarios with lots of nice double-sided maps. And once you get the general idea, it's so easy to create your scenarios. So you have a sandbox and the stuff you can build in that sandbox is pretty fun. Because it may be a game that has certain gamey elements, the upgrades, the semi-deterministic nature of combat, but it works. But ultimately I was feeling that I was playing a game about warfare, that there were interesting interactions. Yeah, sometimes it feels more like uh, a movie about warfare than about real warfare. Maybe it feels more like you're playing a video game in board game format about warfare than an after exploration of dynamics of combat, etc, etc, etc. But it's fun. And, I, and against that, there's nothing that I can say because when a game is fun, to me, that is the hallmark of a good game. We play games to enjoy them. 
primarily uh, to me that's the prime the primary function and goal of a game there are all those other added bonuses uh, raising social awareness uh, learning about history all good but a game has the obligation of being fun first and foremost and company of heroes is fun i play solitaire multiplayer solitaire mode and it works that way but i find it to be I find this to be a really convincing, really satisfying uh, package. It looks great, it plays well, it's huge replay value. So definitely a positive experience, a uh, positive experience I had playing this game and I'll endorse it. I'll tell you it's a good game, it's a fun game, I enjoyed it.